right, welcome. Uh, the biggest and probably the most hardest step to getting started with Ruby on Rails is actually installing it. Um, if you're on a Mac, chances are you have Ruby already installed on your system. And to verify that, I can just go ahead and put Ruby version in my command line. I use Hyper. Uh, you can use whatever you want. There's a built-in one on your Mac if you're using a Mac. So right now we're at 2.0.0. Um, it's not the official uh, release version on Ruby's website at the moment. I think 2.50 is a preview, but there's a 2.4 uh, version that's out. I think it's 2.4.1 that's current. Uh, that's what I use on my other apps that I have actually in it's going to be in production. Um, but to get started on installing Rails, it's a good practice to kind of follow a guide. Um, there's one that I I would say is probably the most up to date called Install Rails on InstallRails.com. It's brought to you by the people from One Month. Uh, they do some sort of tutorial kind of thing as well uh, about getting started with Ruby on Rails, uh, but mine's free. So, huh. Anyway, to start, let's go ahead and just dive in. Assuming you're on a Mac, you can follow along with me. If you're on a PC, there are alternative steps to take and it will actually tell you which way to, um, to go here. So on a Mac, you'll want to actually make sure uh, your versions, at least up to these current versions, 10.6 is pretty old. I'm using the latest Mac Book Pro, which is uh, actually running OS Sierra right now. Uh, let's double check. Yeah, 10.12.6 is my current version. I do have Xcode installed. Uh, you don't necessarily need the whole Xcode app. Um, if you want to install just the command line tools, you can do that too. I, I think I have Xcode. Uh, what was it? I can't remember the actual key command right now, but I have installed the easiest way to do it is just go to the app store and install Xcode. Uh, you need their command line tools to do a lot of things that we'll need uh, to utilize in the coming steps. And going forward here, it's talking about the command line and you can use the built-in one. I like to use one called Hyper. It's at hyper.is, I think. Hyper.is. Yeah, and it's based on JS, HTML, and CSS. Uh, I used to use iTerm too, but this one just kind of has been on my radar. So you can use whichever you want. And going back to this guide, you can open your terminal and it's just kind of giving you a quick run through of, hey, this is what a terminal can do. A big, big thing I like to utilize is Homebrew. I actually have it installed. Um, if you want to install it, you can head to Homebrew's page or there's a just a script you can run here um, I would do it from the homebrew actual page just because you never know what can be out of date on a third-party website like this so brew.sh is the actual website and you can run this script here to install homebrew it's based in Ruby as well so that's something that's kind of nice about it if we run brew v I should get homebrew 1.3.4 is my current one. There's a key command you can run called brew doctor. Might as well run it. Just kind of checks everything out. Make sure it's up to spec. We'll run that real quick. Cool. So by the way, I'm working in a directory just on my desktop called sites. Um, I just created that right before the screencast. So nothing, nothing special there. And if you're near the command line, uh, you'll get probably a lot from this video and many to come. Rails is heavily in, based on the command line. You'll actually generate some models and views and controllers and all that stuff using it. So it's something you'll really want to make sure you understand. And if you don't, I would definitely brush up on that first before diving in. If you follow along, you should get the gist of what you can and can't do. Git is obviously important. It's a version control software. Basically, you can create snapshots of your code and later reference them if you need to and or uh, create branches that are different features. So branches are saying, hey, 
clone this app and I want to do this to it, but keep that other other screenshot the way it was. So I think I have git installed, but I wanna I might as well check first. So we'll do git. I do it all right, so 2.14.1 I think is my latest. In fact, I'll just do a brew update to see what is out of date and what could be updated. And while that's working, if you're new to Git and you're just, just installing it for the first time, you do need to create global user parameters. And Git is not the same as GitHub, so don't don't misconstrue those. Um, it's actually something that stays local, but you can add GitHub as a remote thing that you can push your local stuff up to. So in that sense, you need to create your own little user account locally uh, to to make sure that you're the person that is doing these changes and not someone else. Uh, you can you can set it globally as your entire system, which is probably most case what you want to do uh, based on your user level in your computer. But if you want to do it per project, you can set that as well. I would definitely refer to the Git documentation on that one if you really need to. And you can do the configuration there. That's all good and grand. I'm already set up, so I won't go through all of that. Installing Ruby, you can do globally, just like anything else, but it's very, very, um, I guess, advised to use a Ruby version manager. And that's what actually RVM is in this case. I tend to use one called RVNV. I'm just saying that for short. It's the same thing. It's just kind of done differently. I don't believe I have it installed at the moment, but to install it, you can just do a brew, which see how brew makes this super easy. That's all you run. So we'll go ahead and actually do that on my machine. Looks like everything's done here. So I'll clear that command K for newbies there. Brew install. Well, let me double check once. See if I have it. I don't think I do. Yeah, it's not here yet. So let's go ahead and install it on my machine. And there's really no rhyme or reason why I use this over RVM. Most tutorials you'll find will say, hey, use RVM. But I think that's just because it's so popular or the most popular. And I guess I'm just an outcast. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and install it. It'll do its thing. Then we'll want to run, I'm just following the steps here, rbnb in init, and it should set up or give us kind of a, a wizard to walk through. So we're getting this going. We might need to add this actual path. I'm going to go ahead and do the init and see. Let's double check. We should we should have it installed now. We just need to actually initialize it and everything. So okay, so we'll follow the commands and do init here. So I need to open my Z S H R C, which is kind of taking place of my uh, bash profile, if you're familiar with that. And this just kind of tells my computer, hey, this is the stuff I'm going to uh, have you append to my code. I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code here. And it's just kind of settings that kind of take place. Nothing really crazy here, but we do need to add that little bit here to just anywhere, really. So I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'll add it at the bottom. I'm going to keep my aliases though. So I can add a key command, just maybe like rbnv and just add that eval. So let's try that again. I think we need to do it that way. Yeah. So that's good. So if we have rvnv, cool. So now if you run that again, you'll see. All these commands are available to us, so we can go ahead and use those if we need to. Um, we can do RB and V versions, and I should just have the one. Yeah, it's just the system, which is already set. Uh, so we want to actually install a new one as the, as the next step. So we can install the latest. Let's see what versions we got, 2.4.2. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I do RB and V, it's hard to remember. Install 
2.4.2. Cool. So we're at this moment downloading Ruby 2.4.2. Um, this takes a bit, so I'll probably speed this part of the video up, but just make sure you do this step because uh, you don't want to use the system-based Ruby version. It's too outdated for Rails 5.1.7 or whatever it is now, I said. 5.1.4. So while that downloads, I'll speed this video up. All right, after a long time, hopefully you guys were able to sit through that. Uh, this finally installed 2.2 to our versions on our RBNV directory inside my actual user directory. So we, if we do RB, I'm probably saying this wrong, but that's just how I say it. If we do versions, it should show two now. Um, and what we want to do is set that 2.42 at this point. So what you'll type is RBNV global 2.4.2. And then we'll do one more time. I'm hitting the up key to bring back the history there. RB inversions and it's set. So we're all square on the Ruby front. Cool. All right, next to get Rails to work, we need to actually install it. So you can install it with the actual gem and Ruby gems are similar to something like NPM if you have ever used Node. Um, it's, it's basically the same thing. I would say Node copied off of the gem um, library. If you Google Ruby gems, it should, I think I have that URL wrong. Ruby gems. There's a whole site dedicated to these and they're basically like these awesome plugins. There's plenty of potential out there to go ahead and build an app of your wildest dreams. So with that, Rails is actually one of them. So you can you can Google Rails and you'll see it here. It's 5.1.4, it's the latest. If you just wanna add this to your project, you can do it like this. It goes into this file called a gem file, which we'll get into. Uh, just, just install it verbatim. You can do it like this. The guide here is actually kind of cool. It's, it's basically installing Rails without some stuff we really don't need, like documentation and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on our installation. Just paste that into the terminal and hit enter. And this could take a while too. So if it does, I'll speed this up. All right, I got a permission error at this point and what we need to do, I think my path is wrong. So I actually need to go back and install. My path needs to be set for the RBMV instance here. And a path is, is kind of confusing, but you need to add this to basically the ZHRS or whatever it's called file. <laughs> I can't ever remember these names. So I'm gonna actually install RBNV again just to get that correct path. It's already installed, so it won't do anything. It'll just be like, hey, you already installed that. I'm gonna see if it gives me that. Okay, yeah, so it does this. Okay, I can do this. RBM installer. See if I can just run this. All right, that didn't go as planned, but hey. All right, guys, so I finally figured out what was wrong with installing Rails. I got an error before. Um, it was saying I couldn't install the, the protected version of Ruby on the, my Mac, and that's because I, when I was working on the previous step, installing this RBNV environment for Ruby, uh, there was a step that said close your terminal and open it again to ch to you know have your changes take effect. So I forgot to do that, and that is why it wasn't working. So now I'm installing Rails, and once it's done, we'll be right back. All right, as you can see, 37 gems had installed for Rails to kind of work. We can check if Rails is indeed working if we go to Rails version. All right, 
So finally guys, we got Rails installed. I had another issue with the window. You need to close it and reopen it again to get the full effect. So I have Rails 5.1.4 installed at this time. Uh, if you run into issues, definitely look at look into this stuff. Um, if you're following along and using the same in Ruby manager uh, as me, uh, there's a lot of documentation here. Definitely recommend Homebrew if you're not using it. It will make your life easier if you do uh, on a Mac for sure. At this point, we've got Rails going, we've got Ruby installed, uh, and then the next step, let's see, just install Code Editor, and we can create our first app. So we're basically on the home stretch right now. And I'm in my sites directory again, just for safety's sake, we'll just double check we're using our current version of 2.4.2, .2. cool, and Rails. Oops, version 5.14, cool. All right, so we're ready to basically get going with a site and Rails is pretty cool. It'll give you a, a testing site right off the bat once you create a new new site. Uh, so to do that, you just run Rails, new. I'll just do first app. And you'll see it generate some files, quite a few and it'll actually execute this thing called bundle. And bundle is basically, if you come from the NPM install world um, or NPM world, it's basically the same thing. It's a, it's a package control manager thing too. So when you run bundle, you can update these gems that are in your gem library, so to speak. So we'll get into more detail of all the files and stuff in probably in another video, but uh, to get started, I just wanted to make sure you guys could install Ruby on Rails, get it running and launch your first site, just like it's doing here. Uh, it'll take a little bit to get everything installed and up to speed, especially if you're on a new system. My computer's pretty much brand spanking new, so everything's kind of taking a little bit longer, but we should be set to open this app. So if we ls into the sites directory, we'll see our first app. So I'm gonna actually CD into that. And Git's already set up too, so we can just, you know, see, all these files are new, which is cool. So out of the box to run the Rails server and see it in production, you could just go Rails S or Rails server. You can type it this way too. And it should boot up. It uses a server called Puma, which is newer to the five point release. Used to use one called Webrick, small uh, details there. Uh, so at this point you can navigate, let me close some of these windows. Oops, not all of them. To localhost 3000. And you should be writing Ruby on Rails. Cool. That's the kind of lead in page. If you really want to see the code base, we can go ahead and open that on we'll go to sites, uh, desktop, sites, and I have Visual Studio Code, so I'll just do that. So here's the, the folder structure to the left here. I have a, a pretty dark theme going on here, but it's a material-based theme if you're wondering. But let's open uh, the app directory. It's basically, this is the folder structure. I think I'll go into this in a different video or just kind of dive in into um, building something with you guys so you can get the full spectrum. But there's models, views, and controllers. Rails is an MVC framework, so that's model, view, controller. Uh, the models interact with the database. There's one here just called the basic apple application to start. We'll get into more of how those work. Um, same with controllers as we go. Uh, this stuff is just kind of bundled by default, but Rails is pretty opinionated. So if you do it the Rails way, things are going to be in good shape. If not, that's okay, but you need to kind of be prepared to, you know, provide workarounds and stuff like that. By default, you can ship with just basic CSS here, or you can use SAS. The same is true for JS and CoffeeScript. If you want to use CoffeeScript, I don't use it personally, but it's something to think about. By default, the biggest file we'll probably work a lot with is this gem file. And this is where all those little gems I mentioned before can be declared and installed. And to install them, you can just go ahead and go back to your terminal, 
add you'd add like a new gym here uh, say you I don't know we just installed one that's like bootstrap or something I don't have it handy but you'd add that you come back to here and you run bundle and it'll go ahead and you know install those gems depending on if they're there or not so we'll get into more of that as we build out some sites and apps and stuff like that but essentially that is it to get rails off the ground from nothing so hope you enjoyed this if it was kind of cumbersome apologies but um i think for a mac user and having homebrew installed getting ruby on rails installed these days is a little easier than it used to be so hopefully this helped you guys and i'm looking forward to building some sites in the coming videos i'll see you then